And joining us again is the wonderful, the brilliant Dr. Brittany Peters. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Brittany. Thank you for having me and inviting me back. I appreciate it. Well, you're part of the BMS TV family, and we expect to see you for years on this show. <laughs> now, one of the things that we've been looking at lately has been the idea that Americans are starting to become frustrated with this stay-at-home order that's been uh, ordered across the America, and mm -hmm. they're now protesting against this particular issue. Um, one of the, and I, I'm, I'm trying to, to understand, how do we balance uh, public health versus uh, citizens' rights? And do you think that these people are misguided in their information, or do you think they have, they have a right to be out there protesting? So, you know, in relation to citizens' rights, you know, I'm not a, I, I don't have a, a law degree, but, you know, the way I see it is that um, individuals are actually struggling with the idea of being home so much. And I think that it speaks to our level of um, patience and our ability to kind of manage, you know, before when I came on the show, we talked a little bit about mental health. And so I think people are really feeling the impact of that. And what happens when we get stressed out, when we're starting to experience anxiety or depression is we can become angry, right? And so that those feelings are being placed, um, maybe not in the right area. And so people are protesting because it's becoming almost unbearable to have to stay home and people are isolating. Uh, people are feeling as though they can't get out and do the things that bring them joy in life. And so I really think that um, we, we lead a very fast paced life here. Uh, in America, we have quick fixes, we got drive throughs we got movies, we're able to do so much. And so that restriction is causing people to experience a uh, bit of panic right now. And so I really think it is uh, speaking to the level of um, mental health that we have uh, more than anything. Uh, one person said that it's cognitive dissonance in mm -hmm. terms of knowing that this is an issue, but uh, in terms of this is a real health issue, but the, the need to go out and work. See, the, the thing that I don't think people really understand is that um, those individuals that are protesting, they have a right to protest, and I, and I, I, mm -hmm. I understand that and I respect that. Mm -hmm. But when we, people have a right to their own opinion, but people don't have a right to their own facts. That's, that's mm -hmm. a statement that's, that's universal. And so what my concern is, when you see a healthcare worker standing out in the middle of a protest, standing in front of a car of a protester, telling them, hey, I'm out here trying to save your life and you need to be home safe. Mm -hmm. And people are not recognizing that person's voice and not recognizing the, the, the situation is what concerns me. Is, 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 has fear and anxiety overtaken um, what some people might say common sense? You know, I I can see the frustration on, um, I, I, I've seen these pictures, right, of the healthcare workers standing in the way of protesters. And I can understand for frontline and for healthcare workers, their frustration because they are out risking their lives, right? And so I think what we're seeing here is we're seeing this battle between um, people's uh, morals and ideals and views, right? And healthcare workers, they take this oath to say, you know, we're going to do our best to, to save people's lives. Um, and so what we're, um, what we're experiencing is that then we have these protesters saying, you know, I get what you're trying to do, but I'm home and I'm also suffering. And I may not know how to communicate that, or I may not feel that um, my voice is being heard, right? Um, and I don't know that that's accurate, that everyone's voice isn't being heard. It's that at this point, we have very conflicting and valid concerns. There's the concern about the economy. There's the concern about public health and safety. Um, and so we have these priorities that are conflicting at the same time. And unfortunately, um, only one can really take the lead. And right now it has to be public health because if our, our society and our workers are not healthy, then what happens is we're putting so many other people at risk. 
And what happens then is that our economy is going to suffer because it's going to take us longer to get back to where we were before. I definitely understand everyone's need uh, to get back to, to normal and life as usual. Um, but I have been watching uh, the news and looking at some of the uh, scholars who are talking about um, how we're going to transition back. And I don't know that we're going to have life as usual. And that can be very scary for a lot of people. Well, and again, I don't, there's a new word that has come up and I think they used it in some of the comments that was attached to the particular article. They called them COVID idiots, like COVID and idiots combined COVID idiots. Oh. And, <laughs> and, the, and, and I thought it was cute and I thought it was funny, but I, I, I don't, want to have the conversation or the debate to, to, to digress into name calling mm -hmm. because name calling entrenches people into their positions and it doesn't open a person's mind or heart to what we really need to be talking about, which mm -hmm. is the actual impact in, in, of COVID-19 across America. Mm -hmm. One of the other comments that I thought was very interesting was um, one of the people that was in, in, the, in the article said that, the, that other countries and Americans demonstrating against staying at home rules are making the great USA a laughing stock to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. While the rest of the world is doing everything they can to rid their countries of this deadly disease, Americans are moaning and staying at, and, and about staying at home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting. And then, um, you know, these are two comments or whatever that, that were attached to the particular article we were talking about. And then I, I shared with you, one of the comments that was made by one of our uh, one of our fans from from Manhattan is we do air again from New York to, to California, mm -hmm. and um, this is the second time she's called in, and she keeps asking questions pertaining to that. And even though I think that she might not have watched the full show because some of the things we actually already discussed, mm -hmm. um, she asked questions pertaining to why are the liquor store is still open, why are the bank still open. Mm -hmm. You know, um, me and you had a conversation already about the liquor stores. That was, I think, a part of our first. And we we, we asked the same question because mm -hmm. I think that when you look at it in the totality of it, I think you get more revenue from from um, restaurants than you do from liquor stores. That but that mm -hmm. would be my my assumption. So, mm -hmm. um, what what do you think about this idea of uh, the, the philosophy about this? The banks, why are the banks open? Why are the liquor stores open? You know, I, I think that um, the totality of it is that we're trying to find balance, right? And so I, you know, in our conversation about the liquor stores, I'm not a fan of the liquor stores being open because I have uh, spent my career working with substance use disorders. And I know that this is going to increase individuals' use of substance use, right? Um, and that alcohol is going to be one of those substances. Um, but as far as the banks being concerned, you know, there's a lot about the economy, right? Everyone's like, we got to stimulate the economy. Um, people have to get back to work. And I think that with the banks being open, that was a, a, a business decision to support those workers who don't have access to um, mobile banking. And, uh, you know, I know that some, some viewers may go, well, who are those individuals? Well, individuals living in poverty, individuals who cannot um, afford to maybe drive to the bank to, um, get something they go to check check cashing places and scott um and so these individuals still need to be able to access money in a very different way and so in order for that to occur there has to be some support now banks being open not that people are able to go physically into the bank but they're able to drive up um i saw someone in the bank line on their Right. So this just kind of speaks to the need for people to still be able to access their money and um, electronic means is not always the easiest way for everyone.